Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicat, and in this video, I'm going to talk about what is Microsoft Fabric Notebook, why you should use it, is it something useful for you, what can it do? Uh, we are going to cover all of these questions in this video. Before talking about um, Azure Notebook or Microsoft Fabric Notebook, let's say, because it has some changes compared to the previous Azure Notebook. Uh, let's first talk about what is it and where it is located. So to use the Notebook, you should be familiar with Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric is an end-to-end -end solution for um, data analytics provided by Microsoft. I have a separate video talking about it. It has different um, workloads, such as a workload for storage for the data, for data engineering, for data warehousing, data science, and uh, visualization part of it. So altogether, this creates an end-to-end -end solution uh, for a data analytics. Now, an object in that is notebook. Now, what is that notebook? A notebook um, is a place that you can write codes in it. Now, this place is, um, is a web-based um, platform, so it is, um, it is a um, inside the website, inside the portal for Microsoft Fabric that you go and write this. Uh, and it supports four languages, and uh, the languages that it supports are Python, Scala, uh, Spark R, or Spark SQL. So these are languages that usually you can work with it in this uh, environment. These languages are usually languages that a data engineer or a data scientist uses that. Similar to the situation that if you have a citizen data analyst, you can use Dataflow or you can use Power BI dataset, inside the, um, inside the notebook, your environment and your languages to work with are those four languages that I talk about. Uh, right now, what you see here is an example of a notebook, but I'm going to show you from the beginning how it works. So basically, the notebook is a place that you can write your code and even see the outcome. Like for example, you see this code has an output in a visualization format, so I can see it. Or it might be a code that doesn't really generate any any visual output. It might be a code that writes data into a table or into a uh, into a file. Um, depending on what that code does, you can see sometimes the output or you can just um, just run it and get the results, whatever that code is doing, uh, done. Uh, this code can be then scheduled, it can be combined with the rest of the Microsoft Fabric environment, and you can um, get it working with the rest of that. So, so it is a tool for data engineer and data scientist. That is the most important part of this definition. It's not a tool for a data analyst because uh, it's not a fancy graphical UI such as what Dataflow has or the visualization part of a data, um, uh, the visual, visualization part of a Power BI. Uh, so how does it work? So first you need to have a workspace that is under Fabric capacity. I have a different video explaining about how you can enable a trial Fabric if you want. Then to access the notebook, you can access it through two different parts. Uh, one is from the... Uh, from the um, fabric, you can go to the data engineering workload or to the data science workload. No matter which of these you use, you would be able to get to the um, get to the um, notebook. So if I go to the data engineering, for example, um, then under data engineering, I have this place that I can go and select the notebook. Um, you just assign a name to the notebook, and that is how you can start the notebook. You can even start the notebook from a backup file, which I'll explain a little bit later. The notebook structure is very simple, actually. What you see here is a place that you can write your codes. As I mentioned, it supports four languages, Python, Spark, Spark Scala, Spark SQL, and Spark R. Now, this video is not about explaining each of these languages. They are quite powerful languages. They have some pros and cons each. They have some powerful features, powerful functions you can use, uh, but this is not a video about that. This is a video about what the notebook itself is. Inside the notebook, you can have multiple blocks of code. Each block of code is called as a cell. You can call it a block if you want, but here it is called cells. This is the cell editor for the first block that we have here. 
Now, if you know the code, you can just basically just write the code straight away here, or uh, you can use some of the code snippets available inside here. A code snippet is like a block of pre programmed code, like a template that you can reuse. If I start typing snippet, I'll see some snippets available here. For example, I can use one of these to draw a histogram or or anything else, right? So I'll um, just show you, for example, one of these that draw a histogram, histogram chart. So it writes a code, sample code itself. Now, this uses a sample data, it generates a random data. You don't really need to understand this language to see how it is working. You can just run it. This runs the code in the cell. And after um, some time, you'll see the result. Now I'm using a trial um, fabric account here. So the performance of this might not be exactly what you get in your uh, if um, SKUs, it would be probably much better in those. This is just a trial account I'm using. So this generated some output as the code itself indicated. So it's not only the place to run it, but you can also see the result in here. Um, if I want to connect it to a data set, I can actually use this area to connect it to a lake house. Um, at the moment, lake house connection is supported just like this. Warehouse connection might be supported in the future. Uh, we are not sure about that yet. At the moment, the lake house is. You can create a new lake house or an existing lake house. I have a video separately about talking uh, about explaining what is the lake house. is a place that you can store your structured and unstructured data in a place. Uh, so I skipped that information. You can go and watch that video separately. In here, I'll just go and connect to my existing lake house, which has some tables, data tables in it. I'll stop execution of this um, notebook as well so that I can see my lake house coming here. So these are tables in my lake house. Uh, and I can then write some codes here that work with those. Uh, I can add a second cell of code here. That is how you add multiple cells and each of these cells can have a different language that is one of the beautiful thing about um, the notebook it uh, gives you ability to write in four different languages sometimes one language is good for one thing another language is good for another thing for example to query the data you might use spark sql but to do machine learning algorithms on top of it you might use python uh, i can for example drag and drop customer here that automatically should write the select data from it. Now, not sure why this is not doing that. Let me just do it one more time. I can write the code myself as well, but I prefer this to write it its own. Uh, Lake has another workspace. Let me see where which workspace I am. I'll just move to another notebook that is in the right workspace, probably that one would show me a better result. So let me go back to this notebook, for example, um, because I have to have the works, the lake house in the same workspace as well. So I think this is in the workspace that I want to. So I'll go and create a code in uh, Spark SQL. Not that you have to do that in SQL to query the data. You can do it in other languages as well. So you see that here, I can actually query the data like this and I run it. Um, and you can write more complex query statements as well, but this is not to, just to run SQL code, because if you just want to run SQL code, then you can use the SQL endpoint of the lake house. This gives you more abilities than that if you know those languages. While this is running, on each cell you can do some other things as well. For example, you can add some commentary on the cell. For example, I wrote this code. Uh, now my keyboard isn't really responding at the time of creating this, but that's okay. So you can write your messages like as you see in here, or you can communicate with others. Um, you can do things such as locking the cell or merging it with another cell, splitting the cell. Um, in this case, because I did the select statement, I see the table output in here. This table output can be visible in like this, or I can change it to chart view. <laughs> And if I do that, then I go to the setting view option. I can change it to another type of chart. I can say do this based on English education as the key column or axes and then the values I want, let's say number of children at home. 
and instead of average as aggregation change it to sum so obviously this is not power bi it is not as intuitive as power bi to, to do visualization but it's a good option for me to do data exploration if i want and then i can add my next line of code you can also add markdown um, to write some commentary this is some commentary whatever um, and you can explain what you've done up until this place this is the comment in the line so it gives you a pretty much basic simple experience to write your code and when you do that um, that's pretty much all the need for a data engineer and a data scientist you might say well is that it just a place to write the code well that is in fact a big thing because if you are a c-sharp developer and someone gives you mm, the c-sharp compiler you can do whatever you can in that c-sharp application right same thing applies here now here you have four languages actually you can use any of these four languages to write whatever you want you just need a simple editor to do that and that and this is the editor to do that now you can also do some parts of it in uh, in vs code you can write parts of this code in vs code if you have that installed or you can just continue building it here now what happens after you want to like save it or back it up so if you save this notebook itself it will be saved as an object inside your um, inside your fabric um, workspace you can access it anytime or you can also export it as a file as different format files this can be then used to import when you create a new notebook what about the automation part of it this notebook that you created you can um, run it manually like this or you can schedule it if you schedule it there is a different schedule settings you can set it on from this time to this time run it at this frequency or you can add it to a pipeline which would make it even more um, interesting approach because then inside the pipeline you might have other elements as well you might have a data flow running you might have a copy data activity or any other activities you can add it to a pipeline directly from here or if you are in a pipeline already which again I explained in another video what's the pipeline you can add a notebook activity inside the notebook activity in the settings of it you can go and choose which notebook you want to run and then because it's a pipeline activity you can choose what happens on success on completion on failure and all of those so this way you combine the power of notebook with the rest of your etl um, approach so notebook in a summary notebook is a place that you um, you write uh, code and this code can run on the data set that you have or on sample data sets what the codes can do is really dependent on the language you can do heaps of things you can load data into a table you can query the data you can do data exploration you can run machine learning algorithms on it pretty much you can do anything that those four languages are supporting the editor itself is a simple editor that gives you some benefits of working with it doing some um, some tasks but it's not a really graphical editor like a data flow and at the end the notebook can be combined with things such as the lake house with a data pipeline to provide more end-to-end -end, uh, solution for your data analytics i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video video go ahead and subscribe to our youtube channel we have weekly videos on microsoft fabric and power bi until the next video bye Thank you.